So let's let's first look at the basic property of logarithm. Well, since we define logarithm like that, so we're gonna have the property of logarithm as shown in the box. So if I have logarithm of the product, so I'm gonna get back logarithm of A plus logarithm of B. So if I have logarithm of the ratio between A and B, so I'm gonna get log A minus log B. And if I have log A raised to the n power, so I'm gonna get n times log A. This is going to be handy and useful later. So we love logarithm because we have this property and when we uh, do the differentiation or integration, we can use logarithm to help us uh, to integrate or differentiate something. So let's first look at example 76. All right, I think everyone is ready. So let's do it. So example 76 here, I have a function fx equal to x cubed plus one times logarithm square to x squared plus one. Well, this thing is fx equal to x cubed plus one and then times logarithm of to x squared plus one. Everything in parentheses square. This is what it means. So first of all, you have to be careful about the notation. So this notation log square here, it means take log first and then you square after. So basically the one that I highlight in yellow, this is the same thing with that. So once you have that, you know, differentiate is easy, right? Because you, you can apply the product rule here. So you can will this as your u. And the one that I highlight in yellow, this is your v. And then you can apply the product rule. So you're gonna get f prime x equal to u dv plus v du. Which is going to be you keep u to be fixed and then you take the derivative of log to x squared plus one everything square well that's the first one and then plus you keep we fix which is going to be log square to x squared plus one i didn't touch anything about v and then i differentiate u Well, if you are like me, you are not sure about the steps. You just need to go slow. So I have x cubed plus one, and then you differentiate that. So you're gonna get two times log two x squared plus one, right? Because this is by the chain rule, you're gonna have uh, something inside parentheses in the bracket square. So you're gonna get two times that. And also you have to add logarithm of two x squared plus one as well. And then the next term, you're gonna have log square to x square plus one and differentiate uh, three x plus one, uh, not, not three x, I'm sorry, x cubed plus one. So you're gonna get three x square plus zero, right? And then, well, you can see that everything here, I highlight in green, this is all done, right? The only thing that you have to uh, figure out is differentiate log 2x squared plus 1 there. So I'm going to keep everything here. I didn't touch anything. And then after that, I differentiate that. Well, what is the formula for differentiate log? So if you remember from last time, we have proved that differentiate log x, you get 1 over x. So that's mean here. So you're going to get well, if you differentiate, keep in mind, if you differentiate u, which is u is a function of x, so you're gonna get one over u, but you by the chain rule, you have the u by the x attached on the last term. And then, which means you get one over two x squared plus one. So I'm going to will my two x squared plus one to be my u, right? And then I have to differentiate inner function, which is going to be four x. Well, that's all done for this question. 
All right. Well, you don't have to simplify if you don't want to. Well, this is good enough for the, for the answer. Well, you know, on the exam, they're going to ask you to compute F prime at one or something anyway. So, well, if they didn't ask you to simplify, you can leave the answer here. But, well, I mean, most of the time on the exam, they're going to ask you, well, can you find F prime at one or something? Well, you can plug in number one. Well, you do not need to simplify at all. Once you plug in number one, it's going to be all number and that's it's easy, right? So if I plug in one here, I'm going to get, hey, one square plus one times two times logarithm of, uh, what's that number? Three. And then one over, uh, that is number three as well. Four plus log square three times uh, three. And that would be, uh, let's do that. Two plus, uh, two times two is four. 16, 16 over three. So it's 16 over three times log three plus uh, three times, well, log three square. You, well, let's start this question. This is an interesting question. And well, this is a good candidate for the exam. Um, so example 77, let y be a function of x satisfying y squared equal to y to the 5x plus 15. Can you find y prime at the point 0 and 4? All right, so let's do that. Uh, well, don't copy me yet. So I'm going to show you how to think of this problem. So if I start, if I start from y squared equal to y to the 5x, plus 15, for sure, I cannot simplify my equation until I get y equal to fx or something and they differentiate. This is a bad idea because, well, you have y to the 5x here, terrible, right? Well, uh, what you can do is, you can take log first before you differentiate. Well, the idea is if you take log, you can move something down like because you know that you know that you have logarithm of a to the b here so you're gonna get b time log a well the idea is because we have y to the 5x here well we do not want to differentiate y to the well first of all we are going to use the uh, implicit differentiation where right? we're gonna differentiate for the whole equation here but once I uh, face y to the 5x, I am going to have a hard time because I have no formula to differentiate y to the 5x, right? Because I know that differentiate y, well, I will come back to Peter Sook. Uh, oh, this is plus three times log three squared, so done. So, well, Everyone okay with example 26, right? So good. Well, I just show this thing because I wanna show you how to plug in number one here because, well, I, uh, I think that the format of the exam is gonna ask you to evaluate at x equal to a anyway. So just show you. Well, if you are not sure how to simplify, just leave it there. Just leave it there. All right, so. Let's come back to example 77. Uh, I have y squared equal to y to the 5x plus 15. So the idea is I am going to use the implicit differentiation here. Uh, but the problem is once I differentiate x, uh, differentiate y to the 5x with respect to x, I have no how to how to uh, differentiate this thing, right? Because I know how to differentiate, differentiate y to the fifth power here. I know how to do that. This is going to be five uh, y to the five minus one and then dy by the x by the chain rule. I know, but if I have y to the five x, keep in mind that your power here uh, include x, so you cannot just say this is going to be your 5x y to the 5x minus 1 
and dy by dx if you do that wrong because the formula uh, differentiate y to the n or x to the n anyway so your power there must be number so you cannot differentiate that so to fix this thing so we are going to take log so the idea is if we take log what happened is uh, a to the b here gonna you know we simplify a to the b and then we're gonna get log a to the b is gonna be b log a this is the key all right i told you to start this question because this technique for sure you're gonna see at least one at least one question on the exam you're gonna have to use this technique so let's start by taking log here so i'm gonna move 15 to the left hand side uh the reason is because well, if I move 15 to the left hand side by subtract 15 for the whole equation, on the right hand side, I am going to have only y to the 5x, which is clean. So I can take log easily now. So I'm going to take log on both sides. And then once I take log of this thing, so on the right hand side, I'm going to have 5x times log y. Perfect. So now I have log of that equal to 5x times log of y. So now I'm going to use the implicit differentiation. Use the implicit differentiation. Well, how can I differentiate log y squared minus 15? So it's going to be, well, keep in mind, differentiate log u. So you're going to get 1 over u, right? And then you have to differentiate uh, u again with respect to x. So you're going to get u, uh, u equal to y, uh, y squared minus 15. So you're going to get 1 over u squared minus 15. And then you have to differentiate in the function. If you feel like, Hey, I'm you, we, we, you want to slow down, just say d by the x, y square minus 15 first. If you can go fast, just go ahead. But because this is your first example, so I'm going to go slow. And then equal to, well, next 5x times log y. So this is going to be a uh, product rule, right? So I'm going to have 5x d by the x log y plus log y d by the x 5x. Well, that's my product rule. And then on the left hand side, I have 1 over y square minus 15. Differentiate y square minus 15. So with respect to x, so differentiate y square. So I get 2y. But I need to have dy by dx, right? With me, because this is by the chain rule. And then uh, minus 15, it gets 0. Good. And then equal to 5x. So differentiate log y. So what do you get? So you get 1 over y, dy by dx. Do not forget to, do not forget to uh, attach dy by dx because that is y. Well, y is a function of x. And then plus log y, uh, differentiate 5x, so you get 5. All right, so now you want, you, well, I mean, if the question asks you for dy by dx, you just need to simplify for dy by dx, that's it. But the question asks me dy by dx at zero and four, right? I mean, at the coordinate zero and four, this is what we want. So we are going to plug in x equal to zero and y equal to four. So this is four, because I'm lazy to simplify, so I'm gonna, gonna plug in everything. So dy by dx is y prime, all right? And then that is five times x, which is zero anyway. And then, well, this term gonna be zero anyway. So who cares? And then plus uh, log y, this is log of four times five. All right, this term gonna be zero anyway, right? Because you have x then, x is equal to zero. So I have eight y prime 
equal to uh, 5 log 4, which is y prime equal to um, 5 over 8 log 4. I can stop here. I'm not going to simplify more. Well, if you want, it's going to be 5 over 4 times log 2. Right? But, well, I can stop there anyway. All right, good. That's my answer. Well, any question for example 77? Well, be prepared to see this type of question on the exam. Well, the technique that you have to use is take lock. Make sense? You need to take lock. That is the thing that you ha uh, have to keep in mind that logarithm is going to be your friend for this chapter. All right, so let's do example 78. Let's do another one. This is another good one. Well, I would say either example 77 or 78, one of them, you're going to see the similar one for sure because this is a required question for the exam every year. So be prepared for this question too. So let's suppose that you have y equal to something like that. And then we ask you to find the y by the x. How could you do it? Well, any question to win? No, you just talk to your friend, right? You have questions? No? Okay. Well, if you have questions, you can stop me. Uh, suppose that y equal to that thing, the messy term here. Well, the question is, I want you to find the y by the x. Well, this is the question that I gave to Sai student last year. Uh, I mean, last, last semester, I mean, last year in 2019, uh, I taught calculus for science student, and this is my exam that I uh, let science student do. And you know what? I want students to take log because, well, once you take log, the term on the right-hand side, it's going to be just super easy to, uh, to differentiate. However, well, about 50% of students, they love, chain, uh, they love product rule and quotient rule. Say they're trying to compute this thing by using quotient rule. Well, that is not a good way to do because once you see the messy thing on the right-hand side here, well, I would recommend to save your time. Well, maybe you take log. Well, once you take log, on the left, you're going to get log y. On the right-hand side, well, if you take log of those things, so you're going to get log 5x uh, minus 2 to the uh, cube, right? And then plus log square root x to the fourth power plus 10. And then minus log cosine x squared plus 1. Does it make sense? The reason is because, well, you know that log a times b over c, this is going to be log a plus log b minus log c. Well, it is easy because you know how to differentiate log. Just do it. It just, and then to make the world easier, so you can just well, keep log y there. And then, well, if you don't like to see the power thing, so you can move it down to, this is going to be 3 times log 5x minus 2. This is going to be, well, x to the fourth power plus 10 square root. This is 1 half log x to the fourth power plus 10, right? So you can move uh, one half into the same level. Uh, and then minus log, well, cosine x squared plus one. Well, after that, well, you apply uh, implicit differentiation, right? So you're gonna differentiate with respect to x to the whole equation. So on the left-hand side, you have to be careful. So look at that. You have log y. When you differentiate log y, so what do you get? 1 over y times dy by dx. Because this is y is a function of x. So by the chain rule, you have 1 over y times dy by dx. Do not forget to get 1 over y by, uh, times dy by dx. And then, well, on the right-hand side, you're going to differentiate the whole thing. So you're going to get uh, differentiate 
three, I, I do not need to differentiate three. So, and then I differentiate log five X minus two. So I get one over U, DU, which is five. Well, I'm going faster now. So one over U, my U is five X minus two. And then I differentiate inner function. That's why I get five. Make sense? And then plus one half. I differentiate log x squared plus 10, so I get 1 over x to the fourth power plus 10. And then inner function, 4x cubed. Super easy. And then minus 1 over cosine x squared. Uh, this is x squared, right? Okay. x squared plus 1. And then I have to differentiate inner function. I differentiate cosine, so I get negative psi. And then I differentiate x squared plus 1. So I get 2x. Well, if you feel like, Ajahn, this is too fast. Well, this is not fast. So once you feel like you are comfortable with differentiation, you can follow this thing easily. Well, as I told you, if you feel like, hey, this is too fast, can it go slower? Fine. On the exam, you can go slower than this, but the minimum thing you should show your work as I did here. So the grader can follow your work and then check your work, you know. Uh, so you will not gonna, uh, you will get the full credit if you show everything. If you skip some important step, maybe you're gonna lose your point. And then after that, well, I have one over dy by dx. Well, I'm gonna simplify on the right hand side a little bit. So I have 15 over five x minus two. So that is plus 2x cubed over x to the fourth power plus 10. And then that negative sine two times, you're going to get plus, and then you're going to get 2x times sine x squared plus 1 over cosine x squared plus 1. Well, let's assume that I do not know what... Uh, Psi over cosine is, so I'm gonna just leave it there. But you know, if you know that psi over cosine is 10, you can simplify as well. So at the end, your answer is gonna be dy by dx equal to, well, you have to move 1 over y to the right hand side as well, right? So it's gonna be y times that, the whole thing, right? And if you replace y by the equation that you have in the uh, given problems. So actually, if you move y there, you're going to get y times something that I wrote in red, right? So you're going to get y. This is your y. This is your y from the equation. This is your y. And then you multiply that thing. I just wrote it here. Copy them. Then paste. This is my answer. Well, easy, right? Well, you can see taking logarithm is your friend for this chapter. Well, either example, the last example, 77 or 78, well, they use the same technique. Once you take logarithm, you can differentiate easily. Well, keep in mind, if you see something on the exam that this is so messy to differentiate, you can take log. It's going to help you a lot. All right, uh, let's move to another example, uh, uh, not an example, so let's move to another theorem. So once you know how to differentiate with respect to logarithm, well, by use involving logarithm function, so we're going to look at the integrate now. Well, Pierce would say that, luckily we don't have to simplify this, okay. So again, on the exam, we do not need you to simplify it, so you can stop it there. But this is what I like. So, well, last semester I created the exam and students try to use the quotient rule and, you know, when I feel like I don't want to read your solution because this is so messy, I give them zero. Because just, well, how do you use product rule? What do, uh, quotient rule, this question is so messy and just term getting bigger and bigger. So. All right, uh, example 79, before we do that, so let's look at uh, 
let's look at integration now. So because you know differentiate log, you get one over x. So that means if you integrate one over x, you get back log x. But well, last time some students said that we need to put absolute value here. Is that right? The answer is yes. Because the domain of logarithm is always positive numbers. So that's why we need we got to put absolute value here all the time to make sure that uh, our solution is valid. So it's going to be just logarithm of absolute x. Uh, let's stop here. So I have a question from Nachanon. If the last question were, on the ex uh, were in the exam, do we have to substitute y? No, you do not. So if you leave your answer, the last question, if you leave your answer dy by dx to y times something, phi. This is correct as well. Well, you can leave your answer into what y as well. I just do not want to see y. So I just replace y by something uh, that is given on the question. But well, if you feel like, hey, I don't have time, Ajahn. I want to leave it just as y. So fine. You will get credit as well, full credit as well. All right. Uh, well, any more question about differentiation? No, right? OK, so we're going to start integration now. But keep in mind, integration, do not forget to put absolute value. Well, you have to put absolute value all the time. If you forgot, you will lose your credit. Well, at least 0 0.5 point or something. Well, unless you know that uh, the thing after lock is going to be positive for sure, then you don't have to put absolute value. But to be safe, all the time you're going to put absolute value. All right, so let's look at example 79. So let's start from the basic one. I have 1 over 5 minus 4x before we don't know how to integrate this thing. But now, because we don't know how to integrate 1 over u, but now you can pick your u to be 5 minus 4x, and then your du is going to be uh, 5 dx. Oh, no, no, not 5, sorry. Uh, minus 4 dx. Right, which means the x is going to be du over minus 4. Which means if you integrate 1 over 5 minus 4x now, dx, so you're going to get integrate 1 over u, du over minus 4. Right, and that is negative 1 over 4, integrate 1 over u, du. Before you don't have the formula to integrate 1 over u, du, but now you can because you already know that. This is uh, log absolute u plus c, right? Remember, we have to switch u back to x. This is a full solution. But some of you are going to say that, Ajahn, I can go faster like that. So for the second question, I can pick the denominator to be my u. Right, once I pick u equal to uh, x cubed plus 6x squared minus 10, so you're going to get du equal to 3x squared plus 12x. And at some point, it's going to cancel out with x squared plus 4x, and then done. Well, but for the second question here, I'm going to do it quick. So. Let's see if you can follow my answer. Well, you should at this point. So I'm going to integrate that over x cubed plus 6x squared minus 10. This is the way we pick you quickly. So d x cubed plus 6x squared minus 10. So once I pick you here, so I'm going to say I differentiate that. So I get u prime which is going to be 3x squared minus 12x, right? You can just, well, once you do the u substitution all the time, you're going to feel like it is so annoying that you have to write u all the time. So to, to just get you, you know, run quicker, 
So we're gonna just say, hey, now you are allowed to, to use DU over that. This is a quicker way to do it. I mean, quicker way to write it. So essentially they are the same thing with your substitution and then, uh, well, not cancel, sorry. So I'm gonna cancel, but before I cancel, so let me simplify it a bit so you don't get confused. So I'm gonna have that x cubed plus 6x squared minus 10, and then I simplify that to be three times x squared plus four x. All right, I'm gonna cancel that x squared plus four x. And then my answer is gonna be, well, we also have to get one over something d that thing. So I'm gonna get log absolute that thing. However, I have uh, one third as well, right? One third and then plus c. Well, this is going to be my answer. And I would recommend that at this point, you should be comfortable to do the solution like I just wrote it in red. Well, if you feel like, hey, Atan, I cannot follow uh, what you wrote on the red one, you still have to do, do substitution from the basic. You are going too slow now. And then it's gonna be a problem after midterm because after midterm, we're gonna learn the super hard, I mean, very intense technique on integration. And if you go slow all the time, well, it's gonna be hard to catch up. So let's look at another example of integration. So integration is hard, I told you, so we're gonna have more example compared to differentiation. So let's look at example 80. All right, example 80. I think we have two more for log and then we're gonna go to exponential, good. Well, today we're gonna hit exponential and stop. All right, so example 80. What is your U here? Okay, type in the chat, what is going to be your U here? Well, I will leave you uh, about 30 seconds to think what is your U. Just guess first, what is your U? So I'm gonna follow your answer in the chat. So what is your suggestion for you here? Or well, I give you a choice, square root X or one plus square root X. Any idea? All right, Napatra say one plus square root x. Ganpot say x to the one half, which is square root x. Well, it seems like majority goes to one plus square root x. All right, so we're gonna do u equal to one plus square root x because most of you say that. But, well, if it does not work, so we're gonna come back and do square root x. All right, so let's do one plus square root x first. Well, as I told you, you have to be brave enough to try. If you feel like, hey, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, and on the exam you still, hey, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, well, you will not get any credit because you leave it blank. So just show your work. Don't forget to make a mistake. So here, I'm gonna just uh, pick you first. Then I'm gonna differentiate that. So I'm gonna get, hey, zero plus one over two square root x. Good. So now I have the x equal to uh, two square root x du. Well, let's try it. So this is going to be integrate x over u, right? And then my dx is gonna be uh, two square root x du. Does it work? Not that bad, right? Because, well, you can pull out two, and then on the top, you're gonna have x square root x over u, du. Can you simplify x square root x to something in terms of u? Well, let's get back to that. Well, because you have u equal to one plus square root x, well, that means square root x is u minus one. Two times integrate u. Well, I have u minus one here. How about x 
well, why don't we square this thing, right? Because square root x is equal to u minus 1. So x is going to be u minus 1 square. All right. Can you integrate that? Well, if you ask me, yes, why not, right? This is to integrate. Uh, well, I'm going to group the whole thing to be u minus 1 cube over u, all right? Well, you can rule x square root x as u to the 3 over 2, and then, yeah, do the same thing. Uh, this is going to be, well, I have to expand it. I have no choice. So this is going to be u cubed minus, well, this is the cubic expansion. And then after that, well, I separate into four terms. So I'm going to get to integrate uh, u square minus 3u, uh, and then plus 3, and then minus 1 over u. All right. That looks so much better. Huh? And then this is going to be 2 times uh, u cubed over 3 minus 3u squared over 2 plus 3u minus log absolute u and then uh, plus c. All right, so I'm going to replace uh, 1 plus square root x back. Well, this is our answer. Looks good. All right, all right. Oops, minus log uh, absolute 1 plus square root x plus c. So technically, because 1 plus square root x is always positive, if you say this is just log without absolute value, fine, you get full credit as well because you are lucky enough that 1 plus square root x is always positive. Well, but as I told you, to be safe, I put absolute value all the time. No matter what, it's going to be positive, negative. I put absolute value just to be safe. For me, I'm going to put absolute value all the time. But if you leave absolute value for this question, that's fine. Because 1 plus square root x is also positive. All right, this is going to be uh, our answer. Oh, I, I think I forgot the parenthesis. All right. Any question on this? This is considered as the hard one. Well, we have something harder than this on the exam, but <laughs> this is al already the hard one for the exam. Well, let's do one more integration and for using logarithm, involving logarithm function. And then we are going to move to exponential function after. All right, the last one for integration involving logarithm. All right. Let's do indicate 4 to 9, 1 over square root x, 1 minus square root x. Hmm. What is going to be my u here? Well, I think the same technique as the last question worked well. So we can, we can pick 1 minus square root x here. Well, just go back to example 80 first. So for those of you who want to pick u equal to square root x, you can try at home Well, and see if it works or not. Well, I am not sure, but my first choice for you, for example, 80 is 1 plus square root x as well. But if you want to use square root x, it could work, but maybe you're going to use the detour or something. But yeah, let's try that at home. But uh, let's do example 81 here. I'm going to pick u equal to uh let's say this time one minus square root x well as i told you one uh the experience gonna help you to pick your u so this is going to be du by the x so i get one uh negative one over two square root x well as i told you we see square root x all the time so that's why it is good to memorize the formula of derivative of square root x uh, and then well, if I simplify that, I'm going to get integrate 1 over square root x times u. And then the x is going to be uh, negative 2 square root x du. Wow, this is pretty simple, right? Because root x cancel. Keep in mind here, 
I have the X. I am now switching to the U. Well, when X equal to one, what happened? Well, oh, four, sorry, when X equal to four, we have U equal to one minus square root X. U is going to be one minus square root four. U is going to be negative one. And then when x equal to nine, this is going to be u equal to one over square, uh, one minus square root nine, which is u equal to negative two. This is the first way to do, as I told you before that, well, we can switch our uh, upper bound and lower bound, our integration first. So it is easy. Uh, I mean, so it is, so you can keep track with your variable. And then now you're gonna have a negative two integrate one over u du, uh, negative one to negative two. Is that right? Well, and then you can integrate and get log very term. So let me check my uh, one second integrate okay and then I'm, you're gonna get negative two time uh, integrate one over u to u you get log absolute u and then you plug in u equal to negative two u equal to negative one all right and then you can evaluate that Any questions so far? Does it make sense? Well, after that, you can you can uh, plug in the number, and then that will be your answer. So negative two, uh, and then log. Well, the reason why I told you to put absolute value here because uh, you can see that once you plug in u equal to negative two, so you take absolute value, so you get two. And then minus, uh, you plug in one there, so you're gonna get one. So, and the answer is gonna be negative two times log two. All right, fine. So negative two times log two, this is going to be your answer. All right any questions so i went so slow because i look at my phone <laughs> someone texts me but all right uh example 81 all right any questions before we hit the exponential function so it's gonna be well some people say is it positive to well log one is zero right because uh, log one is e to the zero is one, but here this is going to be, yeah, the answer is going to be negative two, log two, not positive. Well, the answer is going to be negative because, because uh, your function one over square root x times one minus square root x dx, uh, your answer, uh, your graph here is going to be below the x-axis. So when you compute the area, so you're going to get the area under the x-axis and that will give you the negative number. Well, the question from student that, uh, is it positive to from switching bound? I don't get it because, well, the reason we switch the bow here. So we get that when x equal to four, so you equal to negative one. And then when x equal to nine, you equal to negative two. So that's I mean we switch four here to negative one. We switch nine here to negative two. We just follow it and then, yeah, move negative two out. All right, I think he got it already, super good. Thank you. All right, so let's, let's, move to exponential function. So any questions? So we're gonna spend about 20 minutes more for today.
to introduce you the exponential function and then we're gonna stop and then continue on Wednesday. So, all right, any questions so far? All right, thank you for those of you who are still uh, with me today. So we're gonna look at uh, another topic, which is exponential function. All right, so you have seen this thing before, uh, but when we define exponential function, we're gonna define y equal to e x p x. Well, another notation is e to the x, which is more popular. Well, this is going to be true when x equal to log y. So you can say that the exponential function, this is going to be the inverse function of logarithm. So the graph of exponential function, is, this is going to be ooh, like that, y equal to e to the x. So this is going to be the uh, inverse function of y equal to log x. Which means if you compute the domain of e to the x, this is real number, right? Because x can be anything, but the range of e to the x, well, this is going to be just the positive, not positive, yeah, positive, sorry, not include zero because it cannot touch the y axis. Oh, cannot touch the x axis, sorry. All right, that is the simple uh, definition of y equal to e to the x. Well, the good thing about y equal to e to the x is here. So because this is x equal to log y, well, if you use the implicit differentiation, so you're gonna get one equal to one over y times y prime. Well, that means this function, if you take derivative, hey, you get back it itself, right? So this is a good property. So we found a function that if you differentiate, you get back into the x. All right. Uh, and then you integrate. Well, that means if you differentiate e to the x, so you get the same uh, function e to the x. And if you integrate e to the x, you get back the same function as well. So this is a good property of exponential function. All right, so we're gonna look at examples on the next page. Well, before we start example 82, so I think someone leave us uh, a question on the chat. So I'm gonna look at that first. When do integration on the exam, if I really can integrate, can I use a guessing method? What does it mean by guessing method? I have the same question, like I diff a guess function and find a term to integrate. I still don't understand the property of e to the x. Well, for those of you who feel like, hey, I am not sure, I, am, I will have a hard time to pick the right function uh, for you. So if you, can think, if you can think of anything, that is related to that question on the exam, you can write it on the exam because at least if something hit the answer, you get partial credit. Well, the strategy is don't leave it blank, write everything you, you know. You just, hey, I think, well, maybe someone gonna say, I'm gonna think reversely, I'm gonna think, hey, maybe if you differentiate that, you're gonna get this. Can I just guess the answer? Well, just wrote it, just wrote it. Well, maybe you're gonna hit the answer just some part and then you're gonna get some partial credit. Well, that's a good question though. So, who wins say that? I still don't understand the property of e to the x. So the property of e to the x is, well, once we have x equal to log y, right? This is the same thing when I say y equal to e to the x. The one that I highlight in green. So you can take the implicit differentiation Differentiate x, you get one. Differentiate log y, so you get one over y times dy by dx, which is one over y times y prime. And if I simplify it, so I'm gonna get y prime equal to y. Which means this function is a function that when you take derivative, so you get back itself, right? Because y prime equal to y. Well, that means you differentiate e to the x, so you get e to the x. 
very good and that means because you differentiate e to the x you get e to the x that means you integrate e to the x you get back e to the x simple because of this uh, this is the simple property of e to the x is so popular and once you go to uh, the second year or third year and you start learning differential equation you're going to see e to the x a lot because this is the this is a function that you it has a nice property that you differentiate itself you get itself well we're gonna do more examples to show you why this is so popular all right so let's look at example 82 so let's start from derivative first and then integration after so derivative so easy one so let's do square root x to the e plus e to the x all right nothing is hard for this question so i'm gonna differentiate square root something right so i'm gonna get one over two times that and then i have to differentiate in the function all right and then the thing that uh I have to differentiate is something inside the, I mean, under square root. So differentiate x to the e, so you get e, x to the e minus one. Well, because e is a number, right? Fine, so I can differentiate x to the e like that. And then differentiate e to the x, so I get e to the x. Whoa, done. Simple, right? And then next, I wanna differentiate that. So let's do that. Whoa, this is, going to be product rule again because you have something in light blue multiply something in yellow so that's mean I'm gonna do the product rule so I'm gonna keep the first one fixed and then I have to differentiate the second one well as I told you you can go faster than me if you want well psi e to the x times differentiate e to the x squared or x to the fifth power plus 2x well, here gonna be e to the x to the fifth power plus two x. So differentiate sine, get cosine e to the x. Well, but because of the chain rule, I'm gonna have e to the x one more time. Because differentiate e to the x, I get e to the x. And then plus sine e to the x. So I differentiate that, so I get uh, e to the x to the fifth power plus two x, right? Because I differentiate e to the something here, so I'm gonna get the same thing. However, by the chain rule, so I have to differentiate inner function one more time. So that is gonna be five x to the fourth power plus two. All right, that makes sense. Well, this is the answer for this question. So, well, I think this is not that complicated for you to follow all right so we're gonna move to example 83 if you don't have any questions questions example all right if not we're gonna move to example 83 all right let's do integration the quick one all right so i want to do well, let's do that. So I want to integrate e to the two x plus three. So I'm going to do it quick now. So I'm going to integrate e to the two x plus three. So I'm going to change my dx to d two x plus three. And then you can see that I do can divide it by two. So my trick is that every time. So this is your trick. So every time when I see integrate fx dx, if I want to switch to something that I want to integrate in term of u. Why don't you just integrate fx du over u prime, right? Oh, you switch to u, right? You just pick your u and then you divide it by u prime. Well, it's gonna be quick. Yeah, and acceptable for this class. All right, so here we are going to just choose u to be 2x plus three and then we differentiate to x plus three with respect to x so it get two. Well, I can pull out one half and then yeah, done. Because I have integrate e to the u du. 
right? This is e to the u plus c. Well, good. Good. A piece of cake. Right. Well, next, I want to integrate e, uh, well, let's do 1 plus e to the x over e plus x plus e to the x. Well, maybe it's going to work if I differentiate, uh, if I change the x to the e plus x plus e to the x. Does it work? So I'm going to pick you, that u, and then I differentiate e, I get 0, or I differentiate x, I get 1. I differentiate e to the x, I get e to the x. Again, this is perfect. Cancel. And then that will be uh, 1 over, uh, sorry, not 1 over. So I'm going to integrate 1 over u du, right? So I'm going to get 1 over that d that. Well, which you have already the formula, which is log of absolute that plus c. You see, right? Simple. Uh, the last one, well, this is a bit hard. So integrate e to the x plus e to the x. So what is going to be your u here? Well, if you, I mean, don't copy me yet. So some of you are going to say, hey, I will try x plus e to the x. Well, if you do that, you're going to have 1 plus e to the x. Hmm, I don't like it. Because at the end, you're going to have e to the u du. But something going to show up on the denominator here we will leave you a hard time to adjust it. So for this question, I'm going to say, I'm going to just choose u to be e to the x. And hopefully, something cancel. So if I differentiate e to the x, I get e to the x. Well, I can split my integrand to e to the x times e to the e to the x. Right? Because e to the x plus e to the x, that is e to the x times e to the e to the x. And then the e to the x here, so over e to the x, so something cancel. Well, this is a good one because now I have uh, integrate e to the something d that thing. Well, the answer is going to be e to the e to the x plus c. A bit hard because, you know, the notation just uh, make you confused, but the core idea is easy. Sounds good. All right. Any questions so far? So I know I'm going fast today, but yeah, we have only few class left. Well, I'm trying to uh, complete a lecture by next Monday. So you have uh, one week to review by yourself. All right. Well, which we are on time now. All right. So let's look at the technique to differentiate the last one before we, yeah, this is, this, this should be the last one for today, I think. So, well, this is the last one for today. Mm -hmm. It's going to be about five to 10 minutes. And then I'm going to answer the question after class. So the last concept for today I want, that I want to uh, remind you, this is the concept that we want to differentiate fx to the gx. Well, this is not an easy function to differentiate. But you're going to have two equivalent ways to compute the differentiation. Remember last time, uh, I mean, on the first half of the lecture, I said that if you have x to the x, for example, you cannot differentiate directly and then you get y prime equal to x times x to the x minus 1. No, this is terrible. Because your x here, this is not number. You cannot just do just the regular power rule. This is wrong. When you see the function that you have, fx raised to the gx, you're going to have two ways to compute it. First is take log. The second is use 
E to the lock, which is the same technique, but you have two ways to illustrate your work. So I'm gonna show you here. These two solutions are acceptable on the exam. Pick the one you like and use that one. We're gonna pick up this thing again because you have to use this technique after midterm or when we learn the L'Hopital rule as well. So after midterm when we, do, when we learn the L'Hopital rule, so you're gonna have to uh, differentiate some indeterminate form and then you have to take log or use e to the log as well. So let's look at that. This is solution number one that you can do. Let's suppose that I have, this is solution number one. So let's suppose that you have y equal to two x plus one square uh, time uh, raised to the x square. The first solution that you do, you can take log on both sides. Well, I'm gonna show you that. And then I can move x squared down. So it's going to be x squared log to x plus one. All right. And then I can use implicit differentiation. Implicit diff, right? On the left, you're gonna get one over y dy by the x. On the right, so you're gonna have x squared. Well, I have to differentiate log that thing. So I get one over two x plus one times two because this is the chain rule and then plus log 2x plus one, and then differentiate x squared so I get 2x. Well, hopefully this is not too fast for you. And then after that, well, I simplify on the right-hand side, so I get 2x squared over 2x plus one, plus 2x times log 2x plus one, right? And then I'm gonna leave the y by the x, and then I multiply y here. Done. This is solution number one, using log. This is my favorite. I love to use log because it's easy. And you know, it just, I love that. I don't know why it just take, using log is easy. Well, usually students will have an easier time to use this technique. However, there are another solution that you can do well, some of you are gonna say, I don't like to use log, but what I wanna use, I'm gonna switch my fx raised to the gx to e to the log fx to the gx. And then you're trying to differentiate that thing instead. So because once you do that, your fx raised to the gx this is going to be e to the gx times log fx, right? Because you can uh, think that this is log of that raised to the gx, right? And then you can move gx down. Well, which means here you can say this is your 2x plus one raised to the x square. So you can say this is e to the x square log 2x plus one. Essentially, they are the same thing with solution number one, but some of you are gonna say, hey, when differentiate this thing, I can differentiate that. Which is easier for me because I can wheel this thing as e to the something. So I'm gonna get e to the something. And then you differentiate something in a function here. You know they are the same thing. I'll, I'll, I will differentiate the thing there by using product rule. So which I am going to get to x uh, square over to x plus one. I cheat because I copy uh, solution number one. Well, if you use a product rule, so I get you get the same thing inside there, right? Because this is actions. Uh, this is the same thing because differentiate that this is the same thing here for duck rule well the, the same answer just different form well this is acceptable too well that's mean when you do when you face fx to the gx 
you can do either solution number one or solution number two depends on you in the book some books gonna prefer using solution number two because it look easier to them some book gonna prefer solution number one because it's easier to them it's your choice but for me when I do this thing I love to use solution number one it seemed much simpler to me to use solution number one Make sense? All right, that is the thing that you have to keep in mind. To sum up, this is what we learned today. So we learned logarithm and exponential. Natural logarithm and exponential. Uh, on Wednesday, we're gonna start the function a to the, uh, the exponential and logarithm in different base. Right, it's gonna be base a. Something like 3 to the x, 4 to the x, 5 to the x, like 1 half to the x. How could you differentiate that if it is not just e to the x? And then if it is not like the natural log, if it is log base 10, if it is log base 7, how could you differentiate that? We're going to continue it on Wednesday. Well, before you leave today, so let me... Uh, remind you that well some of you asked me what is the format of the exam again so 20% so we have five parts A, B, C, D and E so five parts each part gonna worth 20% so part A gonna be limit and continuity so this is the one we learn in chapter one right this is well chapter one that we just learned and then, well, when we start derivatives, uh, derivatives, chapter two, this is part B. Well, but you can see that when we learn the derivative, we learn a lot. So we're gonna split the derivative to two pieces, part B and C. So this is also derivative. Well, we learn limit, uh, definition of derivative by using limit, uh, higher order derivative chain rule, Differentiate trigonometric function, inverse trigonometric function, implicit differentiation, differentials. We learn a lot of things. So we split different derivative to two parts. When it's come to part uh, chapter three, it's gonna be part four. This is the basic integration. Uh, you know the anti-derivative, the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus, the uh, you know do substitution, just the basic one. And what we just did today, it's on part E. This is uh, working with working with transcendental functions. Like this is going to be differentiation and integration uh, for the function that is harder, like log uh, e to the x psi and inverse trigon, trigonometric or something. Yeah, this is going to be chapter four that we just learned today. All right, be prepared that you're gonna see this format on the exam. So don't spend too much time working on limit problem because you know, limit is only 20%. Well, integration here is only 20%. Well, differentiation is 40%. Well, and part E, this is a mixed one. All right. <laughs>